maybe if there's someone has a question on the number before this one, like one of the first few. If there's not any questions about that, that's fine. And then we'll just throw this. It's a little more difficult than a, a simple one, either. Number eight or number twelve? side is squared, and then the other side is the number, we just take the square root of that number. Okay. To make that happen, we have to do this thing called completing the square. First, 12, it's, it's set up nicely because there's this little blank spot for us to put this little number, a perfect number, to enable this quadratic to be factored as a perfect square. If we're going to be able to write it as a square of some factor. What does it mean to square something? Something times itself. Times itself. So like 5 squared is 5 times another 5. 6 squared is five, uh, 6 times another 6. A factor squared is that factor times itself. Yeah? So if we want to write it as squared so we can take the square root of it at some point, we need to factor it, set it up, make this number just right, so that we can factor it into two identical factors. Okay. So the question then is, how will we do that? I think it's probably easily, most easily answered just by saying, we, we know that that number is supposed to be half of the number that you multiply by x. Let's see why. By making that number half of this number, half of 2, we get x squared plus 1 times x plus 1 times x plus, plus what? 1. 1. Okay, so that number right there needs to be a plus 1. Now we know this has to be half of this number right here. Half of this, you can see it right there because this number is going to get multiplied by x, and this number is going to get multiplied by x, so there's going to be two x terms. They're going to be like terms that are going to add together to make two x. They have to be identical, right? So that we can write it as a square. Uh, and they have to add to two. Identical and add to two. So that's just half of two. Two identical numbers that add to two would have to be half of two. That's really half of any number. If I have two identical numbers that add up to some other number, I'm talking about half of that number. Two identical numbers that add up to six, that's three and three. That's half of six. Two identical numbers that add up to 12, that's six and six, that's half of 12. So you can write this as x plus one squared. Now, just a few moments ago, there wasn't a one here, right? Yeah. I added one to the left side, so we also have to do what? Add one to this side. So this equals four. This equals four. And just like I said at the beginning of this problem, this is the whole idea. Take the square root of both sides. And taking the square root is so much easier than trying to factor a quadratic that maybe is difficult to factor or impossible to factor. Okay? It's much easier than trying to do something that you can't possibly factor. We take the square root that just cancels out the square, and on this side we're left with what? Two. two. Almost. Two. Negative or positive two? Positive or negative two. Okay. And we subtract one on both sides, so we get a negative one plus or minus a two. 
You have two possibilities. Negative 1 plus 2, 1. Negative 1 minus 2, negative 3. If you do completing the square, you get two nice numbers. By nice, I mean like a whole number, an integer, or just a simple fraction, a rational number. And you could have factored it from the beginning. So if we do go back, and we subtract 3 on both sides, we get x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0. Then we could have factored this, it turns out. x, x, about uh, plus 3 and minus 1. You multiply this out, you get x squared plus 2x minus 3. Then you get negative 3 and positive 1 as your solutions. Um, so if you, maybe it's up to you when you're trying to solve it. About that. Could I possibly factor this? Would it take would it be worth the time to take a second and, and see if this is factorable? It might be worth the time. Okay, so this one's a little more challenging. More complicated. Because the, the fastest, easiest, straight to the straightest to the point way I can put it is we want one in front of x squared, not anything else. We want, if we're gonna be completing the square, we want one in front of the x squared. But here we have we do not want 2, we want 1. How can we cause that 2 to be a 1? What can we do to it? Caitlin? Divide by 2 on both sides. Divide by 2 on both sides. So if we divide this by 2, that would be great. Well, to divide that by 2, we've got to divide everything by 2. That's nice. So we get 2x squared divided by 2 is x squared. Negative 8x divided by 2, 4 is 4x. 14, 7. And 0 divided by 2 is 0. Yes. Um, I'm not going to be able to factor that, so we're going to have to complete the square. What do you say? You add seven. Add seven. That's a good practice. If you're going to do completing the square, just cancel out that constant and get the, the constant that you want to have there. X squared minus four x equals seven. Okay. Let's figure out what the factors are going to be. And then figure out what this number would be if we multiply the factors back out. We have x and x. What's going to go here and here? Negative 2. Negative 2. Half of negative 4. What's going to happen when we multiply negative 2 times negative 2? Positive 4. So we get a plus 4. Before there's a, a plus 4 there, that's not going to factor into x minus 2 times x minus 2. We need a plus 4 in order to factor into x minus 2 times x minus 2. So I put that there. For that, this is not the factor form of just x squared minus 4x. It's the factor form of x squared minus 4x plus 4. Plus 2. So we add 4 to the other side. We get 11. It's minus 2 squared equals 11. Take the square root of both sides. That's the payoff of all this work. X squared equals 11. What? <laughs> so we add 2 to both sides, 2 plus or minus the square root of 11. And this is fine. I actually prefer this answer. It's more mathematical, it's more perfect. But if you find the decimal that's absolutely, uh, you know, makes sense, it's reasonable to find the answer in decimals. So. Five point three two. That's one possibility. If we bring this back, change this to minus instead of plus. One point three two negative one point three two. Any questions?
first things first, it's a good idea, it's a nice practice when we're doing clean the square to move this constant over to the other side. Everybody's 12x equals 4. <laughs> And if we want this to factor as two identical factors, first we need an x squared. We also need the x term to come out to be negative 12, and we need two identical numbers to do that. And those two numbers would have to be negative 6 and negative 6. Now that we know that, now that we know this has to be x minus 6 and x minus 6, that means what do we have to add on this side? 36. 36. So we have 36 on both sides, so we get 40 here. So we have x minus 6 squared equals 40. Take the square root on both sides. All right. So you take the square root of both sides, you get x minus 6 equals plus or minus the square root of 40. 40. Huh? No, 20 is half of 40. Mm -hmm. It's not the divide by 2 of 40, it's the square root of 40. Yeah? What? I can't hear you. Cody's squeaking his shoes. General ruckus. Goodbye, Cody. Have a good weekend. Hi, Cody. Don't ever come back. Hi, Cody. Hi, Cody. Put that hand so, what do we do now? Let's get x by itself. x plus 6. And x plus 6. Add 6 on both sides. x equals 6. Plus or minus the square root of 40. Great answer. 4. <laughs> 6 plus the square root of 40. 12.32. Mm -hmm. 4 when we subtract it. Negative point three two. Yep. Yes. So if they did, so if they got the x equals six plus or yeah. minus the square root of forty, but they don't have the. Is that okay? Yeah. This is fine. Yeah. Then this is fine too. Either one. Okay. Either way, the answer looks. That's good. Next one. Okay, so this is like 28, like uh, Hunter asked during the homework question answer time. There's this 2 here. We don't want. Instead of 2, we want what? It's going good. How are you, Keenan? I'm doing well. Hey, everyone, be really nice to have. You are. You are. Thanks, Keenan. Cheers, dude. All right, so first thing that I'm going to do, because I notice if I subtract 3 first, I'll get an even number over here, and I know I'm about to divide by 2, right? So it makes things a little easier. Plus 15x equals 10. Divided by 2 on both sides. Why are we divided by 2, Connor? Uh, so you get rid of the 2. Get rid of the 2. Cancel that out. Make it a 1, right? Okay, then we have to divide this 15 by 2. That's going to be 15 halves. X squared is 15 halves x Come on. equals 5. Mm -hmm. okay. OK. So now, also, this is not such a nice number. Now, you may have this x squared plus um, 7.5x. Mm -hmm. That'll be fine. As a practice, I use fractions, as I've explained many times, because if you use decimals, at some point you may be forced to round decimals. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can write as a fraction, that's exact. So I like to keep it exact. So I'm going to work with fractions. And I, I guess I'll also do decimals. I do both at the same time. Um, right, so we want two. Identical factors. Right. 
and these numbers, right here, this number, and then it's identical twin are going to be half of 15 over 2. Half of 15 over 2, that would be 15 over 2 times a half. Right? That's how you find halves of things, multiply them by 1 half. That's 15 over 4. Okay, well, if we, if we use the decimal, we'll get x squared. Or not x squared. X plus, X plus, what's, I take 7.5 divide that by 2, what do I get as a decimal? 3.75. 3.75. Okay. So, I want these, I want these factors because I want to write it as X plus 15 fourths squared. If I multiply these out, it's going to give me some number here. I need to include that number, otherwise it's not factoring out the way I want it to. So what we go here, it would be 15 fourths times 15 fourths, 225 over 16. And so I have to add 225 over 16 on both sides. Or 3.75 times 3.75, what does that come out as a decimal? 14.06. 14.06? Yeah. Did you round it? Yeah. And now we're rounding and I don't like it. Come on now. What? 0625. 0625, so you could not round it? Yeah. If you go out to 625, okay, that's still okay. So we'll add 14.0625 sides. This is going to be um, 80 over 16. You're going to be the common denominator here. That's 225 over 16. That's 305 over 16. Or 19.0625. X plus 3.75 squared. Keep in mind I'm just working these. These are just the decimals of the numbers that I'm doing over here. Um, so you take the square root of both sides. X plus 15 fourths equals plus or minus the square root of 305 over 16. X plus 3.75 equals plus or minus the square root of 19.0625. Try 15 fourths on both sides. X equals negative 15 over 4 plus or minus the square root of 305 over 16. And you can put that in your calculator, you get the decimal that way. Over here, negative 3.75 plus or minus the square root of 19.0625. It just so happens because like we didn't divide by any factors of 3 or 6 or uh, 7 or anything like that, that we got a nice exact decimal. But sometimes if you're dividing by 3s or something like that, you're going to have um, these decimals that don't round off so nicely. Try to round off at all if you have to round. got the two decimals. That works as well. Just before that you had something like this, just something like this. I'll even the decimals real quick.
Yeah. Oh. All right. So to start with, I'm going to grab this answer we got, this crazy looking thing. Okay? Um, and uh, we're going to write it differently. And, uh, well, something cool will happen, I think. I'm just going to rewrite this a little bit. That negative 15 fourths. The square roots, we have the square root of a fraction. We have the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. We have the square root of 305 over the square root of 16. What's the square root of 16? Four. Nice. So we have the square root of 305 over 4. Got a fraction here. Got a fraction here. They both have. Copy the denominator. So we can put them together, right? Well, this is really two fractions, the positive that and the negative that. But really what we would do is like, just add and subtract the numerators, and the denominator would be 4. So we can write it like this. Negative 15 plus or minus the square root of 305. So the numerator is going to be right, these two things. Negative 13 plus the square root, negative 15 minus the square root. And both of those are going to be over 4. And then I'll just clear this out. And then I'm just going to set this aside for a couple of minutes. So our answer can be written that way. Um, and we use completing the square to find that answer, right? Mm -hmm. Remember that? Completing the square. If we use completing the square, we can do any quadratic equation. We can solve any quadratic equation we want. Absolutely any, anything. Any quadratic equation that would be anything that looks like this. If you're looking at a quadratic equation, you can write it like that. Even if it looks a little funny, like uh, 2x equals 4x squared, that can be written as a you know looking like this. We would, we would have to like subtract 2x from both sides. So you get 4x squared minus 2x. All right. What do we put as c? Whether well, we put a plus 0. Okay. That looks like a quadratic. Looks like that. Yeah. Number of times x squared. Number of times x in a constant. We add uh, 5x squared plus 2 equals 17. We can subtract 17 on both sides. We could write plus 0x minus 15. Now, it looks like a quadratic equation. I could leave it blank. I could not write anything. But just to show you that it is a quadratic, it does fit this form. Uh, I wrote a 0x. So in this case, like a would be 4, b would be negative 2, and c would be 0. Here, a would be Five, that's the number that you're multiplying by x squared. Let me make sure I just circle the five. B would be zero, and C would be negative 15. Part of what we're about to do, we need to be able to identify A, B, and C. So if we're looking at a quadratic equation, and it's written just like this, it would be easiest if we did x squared, x, and then the constant, and then definitely got to have it equal. It's written like that. And it's written like that. If we do completing the square, if we complete the square, like leaving A, B, and C as letters, letter A, letter B, letter C, okay, if we leave them like that, then we will come up with the quadratic formula. We'll get x by itself, and on the other side we'll have negative B. Plus a, minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. You'll notice this looks a lot like this. Right? You've got 
a negative 15. We got plus or minus the square root of this. You can bet that this is the result of 3b squared minus 4ac. Over 2 times a, let's remind ourselves which equation this comes from. It comes from this one right here. So we can use the quadratic formula on this quadratic equation and any quadratic equation. But it's got to look like this. So how does, how does this not look like that? different about this quadratic equation? What? Well, it's different. Yeah, okay, so it has numbers, not letters. Yes? It doesn't equal zero. It doesn't equal zero, so can we make it equal zero? Definitely. Certainly. How can we do that? Subtract or check in on the other side. There we go, that's it. Now we have ax squared plus bx plus c, in this case, c would be negative 10. Zero. If you use the quadratic formula on this, let me get this. So this is the number that's multiplied by x squared, so this is a, this is the number being multiplied by x, so that's b, this is the constant, so that's c. Use a quadratic formula right here. Negative b, that's negative 15. Plus or minus mm -hmm. the square root of b squared, that's 15 squared. Minus 4 times a, a is 2 times c, c is negative 10. Over 2 times a, which is still 2. And this is a negative times a negative is a positive. 4 times 10 is 40, times 2 is 80. I wonder if you might remember in the previous problem, we, there was a point at which we added 225 and 80. All this formula does is it's done all of the, put that down, it's the, done all the completing the square work, done all the completing the square work, and then just like told you where to put the numbers. This is where all the numbers will wind up if you do completing the square. Negative 15 plus or minus the square root of 305 over 4. So the quadratic formula is the result of doing the completing the square on a, b, and c. Not 2 and 15 and negative 10, but a, b, and c. And when you do that, like when we did that, to this problem, we did completing the square. We shifted all this stuff around, and move these numbers, divide things by two, multiply things by themselves, took the square root, and all that kind of stuff. And this is what happened to all of the numbers that we started with. We wound up getting, you know, b there, and it was negative, and we wound up squaring b and subtracting four times a times c. We wound up dividing by two times a. Quadratic formula, we could just plug them into like the end, the end of completing the square. I'm going to give you a uh, just one that you know, make up here. A squared plus um, 15x. Okay, so we'll just do this one together real quick. This is A, this is B, this is C. We go into the quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root, b squared minus 4ac over 2 times a. So, negative, this is b, so b goes right here, 15, negative 15, plus or minus the square root of b, that same number, 15, squared, minus 4 times a, that's 3, times c, that's also 3, over 2 times a, which is still 3, negative 15 plus or minus the square root, 225 
225 minus 12 times 3 is 36. 6 times 15 plus or minus the square root of. is over 6. Yes. Okay. okay. But here's one thing is we get like find the common factors of 15 and 6, right? Divide that by 6. We'd also have to divide this by 6, but you cannot divide 189 or any number here, even if it's divisible by 6. You can't just divide it by 6. This is in a square root and this isn't. Okay. Well, that's the same kind of numbers. Now, if we took the square root of this number and it was, you know, some nice number, like if this was the square root of 36, then this would be 6. And then we could start dividing like that. But you can't divide six into the square root. Okay. Um, that is a fine way to leave your answer. You can also um, add the square root of 89 to negative 15 and divide the whole thing by six. Sure, we put parentheses around this whole thing because this entire thing is the numerator and divide by six. Come again, but subtract the square root. Press enter. We get negative four point seven nine. So negative two point one and negative four point seven nine are our solution. So yeah. So you have to do that. Just like that. Okay. Or you can do this. Okay. That's exact, and this is really, really close. Um, mm -hmm. No, I'm just saying I'm just Okay. <laughs> Let's do another where uh, Case, just real quick, what uh, like what is C? And what is B? A A. No, there is no B. Definitely A. C. The number that is multiplied by the variable, right? Yeah. Just the variable to the first power, not to the second power. Negative eight. Negative eight. Negative eight. And uh, A is what? One. 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 Yeah. So times zero times one. And write that out. So this is a one. Um, now what if I wrote it like this? Negative eight a plus a squared plus fifteen. What is c? And what is b? Eight negative eight one. It's still negative eight. B. I mean, think about this. If I change what a and b are worth, wouldn't that change? The solutions wouldn't that change what this they all thing came out to be if I just exchange by A and B are? Yeah. So should I only pay attention to the order that they appear? No, I should pay attention to what number is times the x squared or the a squared. And that's a. What number is multiplied by the one that's to the first power? That's b. What number is all by itself? That's c. Well, that's c. So it might be a good idea to just go ahead and write it in descending order of the powers, right? The square, and then the first power, and then the, and then the constant, and there's your a, b, and c. So, um, you know, before we go into this, you can do this while the break is going on if you want, but I've uh, gone over by a lot, so.
Thanks for your patience. Thank you. All right. So, like we said, that's A. Quiet, please. This is B. And this is C. Not, not A squared A. Like, that's not A and B and C. A is the 1, B is the negative 8, and C is the 15. So, oh, we're not solving for X, we're solving for A. This A right here. I know it's confusing, but there's an A in the quadratic formula, and the A is also the variable that we're solving for. But let's work through it. Not that bad. Just pretend like this is the X. So, in on this side of the equation, the A is uh, one, the B is negative eight, and the C is fifteen. So we have negative B. What's B? Eight. Eight. Negative eight. Negative eight. So we have a negative, negative eight. Okay, so I wanted that to come up. Hunter brought that up as a question and, and I wanted you to see it. Okay, if we get negative 8 squared, make sure you square the whole thing, like the negative is inside the parentheses. We're squaring it. That's b squared. Minus 4 times a is 1 times c is 15. 2 times a, which is 1. Solutions are 8 plus or minus 64. Negative 8 squared is 64. Mm -hmm. 4 times 15, that's 60. It's negative 60. Mm -hmm. Over 2. Mm -hmm. 64 minus 60 is 4. And the square root of 4 is two. a nice number, is 2. So we can keep going. 8 plus or minus 2 over 2. So, uh, let's do the 2 then. Okay, so that's 8 plus 2 is 10. Divide that by 2. 8 minus 2 is 6. Divide that by 2. We get 5. And we get 3. So we got two nice, nice solutions. Just like with the, the completing the square that I told you about earlier. If you get two nice solutions, that plus a mean. That, it's not true. We can go back to the beginning and we can factor this. Okay? And I bet you won't be surprised to find that our factors are x minus 5, x minus 5, and x minus 3. Eric, stop pretending like you're not doing anything. <laughs> stop doing the thing you're doing. Thank God. <laughs> I would just ask it. I'd say we vote. Can you vote Derek off the air? Vote, you stop to Derek off the air. I wouldn't do anything. Here we go. Okay. 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 For Derek? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh, that's great. A squared minus 8a plus 15. Okay. And if we were to set each of these equal to 0, like we do with the factor, and solve for a, we get a is 5 and a is 3. If it's confusing that this is a, just change it to x, right? Change it to x, and then all that a, b, and c maybe will be a little less confusing. Um, so yeah, if you get whole number answers or you get like fractional answers, if you get 7 over 12, well, that must be that was it was factorable before we begin. What are we going to need to do before we can use the quadratic formula? We have to get everything equal to zero. Got to be equal to zero on one side. Get everything on one side. Zero on the other side. Right? Got to do that first before we can then decide what A, B, C are. 
Well, I'll leave it to you. Go. Okay, so you guys work on it. Zero. When the side of B is equal to zero, you got to subtract x, six x squared. These are like terms. We put those together. Subtract two. These are like terms. We put those together. So we get five x squared minus three equals zero. So to use a quadratic formula, we just need to identify B. We need to know A, B, C. Alright, so what is A? What are we going to use for A? Oh, oh five. zero. Five. five. Right, A is always the thing that's multiplied by x squared. There it is, five. Multiplied by x squared. Alright, what is B? That's zero. That is zero. There is nothing times the x. That's why there's nothing there. And zero times x is zero. And C? Negative three. So now we know A, B, and C. Put it right in there, and we're good to go. So negative B with root zero. This one is the square root of B. Zero squared minus minus four times A times C over two times A. This equals uh, well nothing. Plus or minus the square root of, uh, this is a positive 12 to 560 over 10. Plus or minus the square root of 60 over 10. Saying what I have written down is the answer? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we can simplify it. Um, like, this is 60 is 4 times 15. So we could write the, this is the square root of 4 times the square root of 15. Like, we can separate square roots into okay. products of square roots. Now, what's the square root of 4? So now this number is a factor of the numerator because it's multiplied. That's what factor means. And it's not inside the square root. It's like in the land of regular numbers, not square root numbers. If that makes sense. So this 2 and this 10 can cancel out their common factor of 2, giving us square root of 15 plus or minus square root of 15 over 5. that I'll be really impressed and it'll be great. It'll make me smile and all. Really? But I'm not going to mark you down because you did it. Okay. So that's what happens when one of your numbers is zero. The one thing I did want to point out before we do anything else is there's an easier way to solve this in the quadratic formula. Okay. Let's go back to before I wrote that zero x in there. Cluttered. There is no x term, so you know what would be a whole lot easier is add 3 to both sides. Because once I collect everything on one side, I notice there's no x's at all. So if I add 3 to both sides and divide by 5, So what can we do now, now that we have x squared equals 3 fifths? Square. Take the square root. Mm -hmm. right? You don't have to bother with any weird anything. Just take the square root of both sides. x equals plus or minus the square root of 3 fifths. Which is the same as the square root of 15 over 5. You could have just moved 
moved everything to one side, got an x squared by itself to take the square root. Remember doing that? Yeah. Right? It led to completing the square, led to the quadratic form. Should take the square root of both sides. What's that? Should we do that? That's what I would do. If I noticed it, you know, if you get on a roll and you're just always using the quadratic formula, maybe you don't think to, you know, kind of step back and say, well, is there an easier mm -hmm. way to do this? Okay, then. So there's like a lot of answers. Yeah. A lot of ways that the answer looks. But the answers are all equal to each other. Okay. Okay. I'll show you how, just so that you, you feel better about it. Okay. So remember how I said you could take the square root of 3 over the square root of 5. When you have the square root of 3 fifths, you can take the square root of 3 over the square root of 5. Just like when we have the square root of 4 times 15, you can do the square root of 4 times the square root of 15. You can break them up like that when you have products and, and uh, quotients. So the square root of 3 over the square root of 5. So we're getting there. Notice how this denominator is the square root of 5, and this denominator is 5, like a whole 5. So the way to get there would be if you multiply the denominator by the square root of 5 and multiply the numerator by the square root of 5. What do you think the square root of 5 to the square root of 5 would be? The square root of 25, which is? Which is 5. And what's the square root of 3 times the square root of 5? The, I'm not saying that you can't do something wrong and get the wrong answer, but I am saying that these two answers just look different, but they're the same number. Are we going to have to do this at all? Probably. If you give me the answer square root of 3 fifths, or you give me the answer square root of 15 over 5, or you give me the answer square root of 60 over 10, all of those are fine. Okay. Just start. As we put more skills together, we're going to be able to simplify those. If for no other reason, then I don't have to check 100 different looking answers to make sure they're all equal to each other. Uh, but the moral of that story is maybe check into another way of doing this other than the quadratic formula. So quadratic formula could take you quite a, a long time, quite a few steps, where we could just get x squared by itself to take the square root of 